My name is Olushe Gmoni. Uh, I'm a former governor of Ekiti State, and I'm presently the deputy national chairman of the All Progressives Congress, the APC. Politics should be for all of us who desire to serve, who desire to make contributions to development issues, who desire to see our terrain fully developed, who desire to offer service to the larger society. I believe that this does not have to be limited to any discipline. It should be a matter of if you have the interest to serve. I believe that people are ready for a leadership at whatever age they consider themselves matured enough and ready enough. It doesn't have to be pigeonholed. It doesn't have to be pegged. Uh, the president of France is not an old man, and all of you know that. So why should we say that people cannot aspire to office because they are not up to a particular age? So I support absolutely um, any bill that removes age barriers. There are youth who are ready. There are youth who can hold their own. So when we say the youth are ready, we don't mean that everybody is ready. Just as not every adult is also ready. Not every old man is ready. Not every old woman is ready. But I believe that amongst the youth, there are people who can give credible leadership if they have the opportunities. If there is much grass about me, I think it will be that I was raised by parents who, who were holding their own in the village. The good people of Ekiti State should expect that whatever I did right that made people hold the views they are currently holding about me, I will do more. Um, definitely I have a capacity to do more because I'm now like a student that is repeating class. And when you repeat class, you should do better. You should be able to do better. And I believe I should be able to do better. Um, I also ensured that we created an access to the digital world for young people by saying that every child that comes into the, um, into the boarding school at SS1 will get a laptop. In an environment, each of the secondary schools had um, uh, visits and they had uh, generators. So you are 24 seven, you are with your computer. What I was trying to do is simple. I wanted a man-machine interaction. Not necessarily, you're not using it for, for learning. Uh, though, though, yes, they were getting a lot of contents, but I was conscious of the fact that they were in the same class as the students also, who would not have this. So we said, put these guys on the information highway. Let any of them drive at any speed he wants, but you may have a hundred, a hundred thousand people and only one or two will become world beaters. That one or two is a representation that is good enough to create hope, to even create economies in volumes that you may not be able to imagine. So we put them there. We gave them all laptops. I brought Chief Adegbo Onigbinde, who is one of the best development coaches around. He's a tactical coach. Being a tactical coach made him Igu's uh, a coach, and he did it quite well. But he is a development coach. So I brought him to come and be resident and work with us full time. I brought 
a lady called Amelia Ede, top grade athlete in the 70s. Later, the chief coach, athletics for Nigeria, to come and run our athletics development programs. I bought a man, Coach Abe, from America, who is an international tennis certified, uh, long tennis certified coach. They were running programs for games master and coach development and also stars development of young ones at the grassroots level. What we were going to be able to run competitions both at inter-school levels and at local government all-stars levels and ensure that this also get on television to, to incite people to watch our own sports uh, reasonably well. We, we put on a digital, a digital uh, station. We had a digital station before most of Nigeria. By 2010, our digital station was, was on, fully on, and we wanted to be able to do live broadcasts. The reason why we were doing this is because we believe that there are a lot of stars, talents embedded in young people that we wanted to bring up. I think Olusoji Pachuba still has the African record. The sprinting, high capacity sprinting, is gene controlled. No matter how much programming, how much uh, uh, training, if you don't have that gene, you are not likely going to be the top one. That's why you, if you, you, something is common to the complexion of people who run at that level in the Olympics. They are all Africans. And that gene has been traced to West Africa. And I can say for certain that that gene is probably in Adoikiti. That's one of the reasons I brought Amelia Edith. And I know that if she were there now, by now, we would have identified at least four, five, ten people who has potentials to win gold medals for Nigeria in the Olympics. You don't wait until Olympic is two years before start looking. You won't get anything if they don't have the right of bringing, if their diet has also made them very suspect. And talking about diet, that was why, that was part, because I want the gray matter to grow very well, and I want the physique to grow well. That was why I brought in eggs. I was giving pupils at primary and junior secondary, eggs and chocolatey Tuesdays and Thursdays, two, twice a week. Free of charge. Because we are trying to develop the people of the future. We are ready to invest in them. And what I told the sports guys is that as soon as they get somebody, they quote a five-star potential, we will take over the feeding. And we will be giving such a guy weekly rations and warn the parents, this food is not for you. And it's not for the younger brother or the older sister. It is for this guy or this girl because of what they will do for you in future. We would have done that. If we don't invest in the youth, we are not going to get them to be at their full potential. So we, we created opportunities. We wanted to invest in them. We were investing in them in a very unique way. And I'm sure we would have been getting super results by now. If you ask me what am I going to do, those programs, I am going to, I have quite a lot of them, loads of them. I'm going to bring them back. Of course, in Ekiti, I introduced the first scholarship scheme for Ekiti as a state. I created the first scholarship board. I introduced the first scholarship scheme. Once you are brilliant. And uh, the scholarship scheme was a product of that. And in two years, I think we did, uh, remember the figure now, whether it's 201 or 101 PhDs.
PhD scholarships. Many of them are lecturers now in different places. Some of the youth of then are entrepreneurs in fish farming. So we created an entrepreneurship development program where we deposited money with a bank of industry and they were going to run a counterpart funding for it and we were training them to be entrepreneurs so that they will have access to that loan. Now a loan from the Bank of Industry, who, part of which was funded by us. And of course we had microcredit scheme. For those who want the quick fix, 100,000, 200,000 to be able to start a business or be able to do what they, they have been doing before very well. So our programs for the youth will be a continuation of what we have done. I would say they should not give up. I feel for them, and I believe that we owe the youth the responsibility to help them to get over the poverty.